Hello, everybody, and welcome to StarNet Link. And today we, today on my channel, we have a guest. And um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about your story? Okay, thank you for having me. So my story is like how they all start this whole thing, like how did I came across this twin flame information, okay? Um, so... Like before I come across this information, obviously I have had some experiences in the past. Just to clarify, um, I used to have uh, soulmate experiences in the past, starting from childhood and later in life. I've also had some spiritual experiences as well. I had like um, spiritual attacks, you can say like uh, some black magic is being done upon me like more than once so anyways how did I come across Twin Flame first it started um online of course um um first I was watching like YouTube videos um there's this content creator on YouTube who happened to be into this LOA star uh stuff um then this person on youtube opened up a loa community a uh, lot of attraction stuff kind of like um, sciencey spiritual stuff um she opened like she opened up a group and uh, i joined in obviously i've never been into such groups before uh in a community like that so I ended up joining in and there were like a lot of people, thousands, thousands of people and um, uh, yeah, I joined in and it was kind of like interesting at the start. And of course there are people in these communities that have cult-like mentality and they have their own groups as well. And, how it started is I bump into one of those people in the group. Uh, they appeared in a chat group, and I happened to bump into one of them. I, I chat with them a little bit, and then it progressed into me sending like dark messages. I mean, I was DMing them, and you talk about each other. Um, yeah, well, there is this one person who happened to to be like a twin flame. I mean, who had a twin flame experiences. Um, we share informations together. You know, I was sort of like a mentor to them, kind of like advising them. They would, uh, one of them would ask questions. Um. You talk about our childhood a little bit and um, relationships with people who we'll share general information, maybe some some weird stuff, um, maybe like conspiracy theories and a lot of weird things. Um, so yeah, one of them is just uh, friendly with with me, and um, yeah, it started with one person, then the second person. Uh, uh, the same thing happened, you know, just talking to each other, getting to know each other, DM, and all of that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I was getting closer to them. I noticed we, we became like buddies and all. Um, yeah, uh, they would be friendly and respectful. We would share contact with each other. And just progress from from there. So, so there were like two people at that time, and uh, both of them turned out to be like mutual friends. You know, it was like a weird coincidence, mutual friends and twin flame, <laughs> twin flame experiencers. And so I met twin flames, and and then uh, one of them asked me like, "Have you ever heard of twin flames?" and 
then they, yeah, they talk about their stories. And I said, uh, yes, instead of saying no, I said yes, because I, I assume um, that twin flames are the same as soulmates, which clearly they're not. Obviously, they're not. Um, yeah, I just auto automatically believed in them for some reason because I had soulmate experiences in the past. So, anyways, one of them <clears throat> invited me to join to one of their groups for Twin Flames. Especially, they just don't invite anyone into the group unless you're just like one of one of them um yeah they just don't allow anyone to come in because they apparently had someone in their group and there was problems going on there's like some conflict i guess and so yeah i was invited to join into the group and flame group like it was it was so small and tiny and they have this so-called twin flame radar like they, they can detect to see if you're like one of them i don't know how they do it but yeah i was invited i joined in a group so it was around last year maybe around may yes last year around may and uh, yeah, around me. So yeah, this whole thing started. I was trying to understand this whole twin flame thing. You know, I was just a new, but I didn't understand much because obviously I've never had a twin flame at that time. So I was get, getting into it. And then a week later after joining the group around May, uh, yeah uh, <laughs> then uh, a week later uh, I met my my twin flame <laughs> online um, yeah that was weird it was just a weird coincidence um, so how did I meet my twin flame obviously it was um, it was through YouTube of course um, I was subscribed uh, to my twin flame uh, uh, years ago because of some YouTube videos that I've watched. He, uh, he was um, friends with this guy on YouTube. It was kind of like popular in a way. Um, for They were friends for like a very long time. So like that's how I knew him. I recognized him from years ago. I mean, we don't really know each other, but I recognized him. So um yeah i there's this video he uploaded on his youtube channel yeah it caught my attention i was like hmm, wow that's really nice nice video i commented on his video and i said oh wow you know, wow like, that's all and then uh later on he my twin flame he started like stalking me checking out <laughs> on me i don't know why but yeah that happened i guess he was just curious uh he didn't have a lot of subscribers you know it's just around 4k and yeah not a lot of people comment on his videos of course and I happened to be one of them who just comments i mean I'm I'm not special, you know. I'm just I just I just subscribe to him. I just watch his videos. That's all. And he, yeah, he stalked me a little bit. He checked up on me because uh, I'm a. He realized that I'm a girl. That's why he got more curious and just checked up on me. Yeah, on my YouTube. And he started asking me questions. We were, we were having conversations in the YouTube comments. And apparently he got, 
got excited and he wanted he wanted to call me <laughs> he's excited and uh he gave his contact and information and yeah we started skyping each other we chit chat a little bit and we were introducing ourselves you know he would ask me general questions you know where you're from and all of that and yeah it was nice you know um there's also a, a strange part like not because he was shaking up the on me the way he was excited for me uh, over a stranger like I mean we don't really know each other but it was really strange like uh, it felt like it was orchestrated for me because you know I did just learned about twin flames and then he just showed up like a week later after joining a group and <laughs> it was really strange um, yeah um also like uh, um, there's this email on skype like when we added each other on skype um he has like the same name as my email obviously there is like a cryptic message as well it's kind of like one-sided um uh yeah that email on skype was created by my best friend like many years ago i was like 13 at that time um, and she's like my soulmate you know and i think there's like some sort of like con connection maybe she's the one who let me to him, I guess, I don't know, there's like connection, I can feel it. Yeah, he saw it, uh, he was like so surprised. I mean, both of both of us, we were surprised. <laughs> I mean, it's really funny. I mean, he has the same name as my emos. <laughs> and yeah, when when he talked about himself a little bit, um, I noticed some similarities, I don't know, I just, it was just very strange, it's so surprising. Then we did a video call for for the first time on Skype. It lasted for about an hour, and yeah, it was nice. We were both confused and surprised. We was excited. I mean, we were both excited, of course. So he was like a uh, super nice, you know, charismatic. Um, he seemed like as if he's into me. Yeah, he was like cool, chill, friendly. Um, and asked me questions, of course, he, most of the time, and I was like answering them. Um, yeah, he was cool at that time, charismatic. Yeah, just yeah, he was really nice to me. He was kind of like love bombing in in a way. He was like love bombing me a little bit. Um. He would say things like, um, uh, your your email is mine now because, you know, he has the same name as my mom. And he would say things like, um, uh, what's the meaning of love in different languages? Uh, oh, uh, I want to hug you. You know, just, just a love bomb thing. Yeah. Like, uh, my reaction at that time was like, wow, like, he looked like the man of my, my dreams. It's so weird. I mean, I don't know him. And the first time, like, when I saw his face, I was just, uh, you know, like, sort of in trance. And I, I got hooked on to him really fast. And my God, that, like, it was so intense. There's like chemistry and huge attraction. And uh, yeah, there's like this full recognition. I felt like it, there's some similar similarities and it was just so intense. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's so incredible. Like these feelings, it's, yeah, there's this soul recognition and feeling like I met the one or or I guess you can say I met, I met, I met my soulmate <laughs> I met my soulmate and 
then there's this telepathy going on and I was thinking about something in my mind, like maybe some questions, I don't know. I was thinking about something and he said something moments later out loud and I was like, oh my God, did he just read my mind? I didn't expect that, but yeah, that just happened, my telepathy. I experienced that with people in the past, you know, soulmates, my best friends, my soulmates, you know, I... Yeah, I had that with her. Yeah, that was really strange. And anyways, um, after that, what happened was, um, yeah, I was feeling so ecstatic, you know, like excited, and um, yeah, I, I had Kundalini. Apparently, I don't know if you if you've heard. Kundalini, but it is um energetic, uh, feminine, sexual energy that's located at the base of the spine, and it flows into your body like up and down, like into the chakra system, um, for the purpose of spiritual ascension and awakening which is completely BS, of course. Um, it's completely the opposite of what I was experiencing. It's not ascension, it's <laughs> dissension. Like, this thing nearly destroyed me. Um, so apparently I had that immediately just after meeting, maybe during, um, like... When we video calls, like I sense something like there's this this other side of him that I felt besides this this mask that he put on, you know, this charisma and he was like super charming. There's this other side of him. I felt that he was like insecure. He's like this insecure little boy. I just felt, um, yeah. I just felt his insecurity. I thought it was my anxiety. It wasn't my anxiety. It was coming from him. I actually felt the vibes from him. And then by the look of his face, I don't see a grown man. I see a little boy. It was as if I I was a little kid again falling in love with a six-year-old boy. So I, I, I kind of felt like that with him. There is this innocence and love, this kind of blissful feeling. That was, yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I had this Kundalini thing all of the sudden, immediately, overnight. Um, I had like, it's so embarrassing to say, but I had, uh, like or get spontaneous orgasms it was so intense it felt like heaven heaven i've never experienced anything like this before in my life like never ever it was so intense um, then i had a dream about him for the first time it was so vivid and he was like riding on a white horse and he all smiles you know it's just a romantic dream and then the ne next day I woke up, I was feeling so drained and tired all of a sudden. Like, I didn't understand why, why I was so drained and tired. But I was also feeling like all oh, blissful, uh, happy, ecstatic, euphoria. It's like I'm in heaven. Um, I was feeling drained as well, tired. Um, I lost appetite as well for like days. I wasn't eating well. Um, I, yeah, my throat was like fucked up here. I don't know what happened. It's just, I was feeling something here. I, I didn't feel well in general. And then after that, I regained energy back again, regained my 
way that I've lost my energy back. Yeah, and even before that, my my eyes turned red, like both of them. And I look at myself in the mirror, like, oh my God, what is happening right now? There was this uh, dinner party that I was supposed to attend, but I didn't because my my eyes were red, like it's so embarrassing. Yeah, I couldn't come. I almost went to the hospital then. I didn't. I didn't feel um I recovered after that for two days. Like it took me two days to recover. Yeah, and about my twin flame, of course, I was you would contact each other on off like I was the one who initiated the contact the most here and there a little bit, but I noticed he started getting distance uh distant from me even more and more but after i got hooked on onto him he he got like switched off like cold detached all of a sudden he was getting distant um yeah and at this point i started getting doubts and all of mental confusion um let's say if he was my dream thing then why is he acting like this why is he so cold all of the sudden he was he was he it seems like he was so into me but suddenly he just grown cold honestly this sounds like it as if he's like a psychopath narc <laughs> man he was just cold and I was in that group at that time. One of them told me, oh, he's, he's not a narc. If he was a narc, he would hurt you, abuse you, then leave you. But in my mind, I was thinking, he, well, obviously, he discarded me, so it seems like he's, he's gone. I felt like I was, like, taking, taking advantage or... You know, I felt like I was being tricked or something. First, he he love bombed me, and then he disappeared all of a sudden. Like, what the heck? Anyway, so um, yeah, this whole con confusion started. I was going through that Kundalini thing. You have symptoms like um, spontaneous orgasms and uh, vivid dreams in heightened uh, uh, sensitivity, you become super sensitive, you may develop psychic abilities, um, you'll develop food intolerance, you know, you'll be sensitive to certain foods. You will also experience a lot of energy drainage coming from this. And you go through this whole dark night of the soul, um, then towards the stage where it leads to ego death, where you feel like death, you don't want to live anymore, kind of like suicidal almost. Um, yeah, it's a really draining experience. Obviously, I went through all that. Yeah. Um, you know, I was experiencing this whole energy drainage when I regained back my energy. And then after like one week or two weeks later, I crashed down again. And and I remember around that time, my dad got me a popcorn, like fresh popcorn. It was hot. And I started eating the popcorn and then after some time, I <laughs> I didn't feel good. Like my throat was hurting me. I've never had something like this. I've always eaten popcorn, but not to the point where uh, I don't feel good. I guess you can say I had I have a food intolerance towards popcorn, which I never had before. Um. Yeah, I went to bed the next day. Um completely screwed like my throat is just fucked up and 
I got ill again. I crashed down. I had cold, flu, cough continuously. Um, it went on for weeks, even up to a month. I didn't even recover properly. It took me for about a month to recover. Yeah, and it's my twin flame at this point. He's has he has grown colder and distant to the point where I don't feel for him anymore. And like this twin flame experience so hard. Like the first date really happens quickly. Like this whole Kundalini thing and the separation happens really quickly. Of course. Um. Um, yeah, even after me, apparently he was dating someone else. I was, I sensed it, sensed it telepathically, like mentally in my mind. I felt like he was dating someone else. I don't know why, but I had these thoughts in my mind. Um, it turned out to be true at the end, like later. Yeah, it was, ter <laughs> it was terrible. I didn't enjoy this experience at all um yeah i had a lot of dreams that as well with my twin flame vivid dreams it was really scary I had all these twin flame symptoms along with the kundalini you know and then um i had this emotional roller coaster um First, it would be like, please, euphoria, love, followed by anger, frustration, sadness, very deep sadness. And then it trans uh, transitions into me being, being sever severely depressed. I became so depressed. I had this spiritual <laughs> depression coming from the Kundalini, of course. Dark night of the soul. <clears throat> yeah, I got into this deep down uh, major like depression. I've never had such experience in my life. I mean, uh, I've never had Kundalini. You know, even previously, I've done yoga like too many times. I've done me meditation, but it doesn't involve in like channeling spirit spirit guys and angel no it was nothing like that until i met my twin flame then then i had kundalini yeah um, yeah it was really bad um uh all of emo emotional roller coaster i became super sensitive i was like crying a lot a lot like with those crying spells and uh, my crown my <laughs> my throat chakra activated or whatever i don't believe in them anymore my heart was so i was feeling so intense it was like breaking wide open i would be so in love like deeply in love and then i would cry later it, it just felt so painful and um <laughs> intense and this kundalini thing affected my life as well to the point where i don't have control over my reality it feels like um i'm not living in here or I don't know how to explain, but it's just, it just felt like orchestrated. It felt like something is controlling my life. I feel, I feel like I'm being forced to go through this whole experience. Yeah, it was really intense. Inflame. Yeah, signs and synchronicities, uh, vivid dreams, multiple frequent dreams. Um. Yeah, telepathy thing going on, of course. Um, it was really intense journey. So I was like crying straight for like four months. We were all already separated. 
And then four months later, we, you can say we rekindled again. It wasn't a real reunion, of course. I'm the one who <laughs> reached out to him on YouTube instead because he wasn't replying to me on Skype. I mean, he apparently he, he doesn't use Skype that, that much. Like, that's why I don't hear from him. I think it's BS. It's just an um, like, excuse, of course. I mean, this whole thing is orchestrated and set up to be this way, obviously. Yeah, I reached out to him on YouTube. I was so frustrated. Like, uh, what did I do to deserve this this treatment? Like, you know, why is he not contacting me and stuff? And yeah, he responded. You know, making excuses. I mean, it's the same excuse as before on um, Skype. You know, oh, sorry, I've been busy. And, you know, that kind of thing. But then he didn't come on to Skype. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? It's, yeah. This Kundalini thing really affected me badly. Um, it affected me to the point where I started having like financial issues, the financial blockages all of a sudden. Um, it was just really bad. I was really lost and confused in my life at that point. Um, no sense of like direction. If there is no money, then what the hell am I supposed to do? Like, should I get a job or what? Like everything is just blocked in my life. Yeah, it was really bad. And, um, yeah, my twin flame, came back it was around september when i reached out to him i also started expressing myself like i re i recorded myself <laughs> um going through that whole dark night of the soul thing um, i was telling him like what happened to me and just professing my 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 love towards him, my feelings, and <laughs> yeah, I sent it to him so that he could see it. Yeah, a week later after that, he he did he came back, he logged into Skype. He saw that video of mine, like going through like hell, and he, yeah, he felt he felt bad, obviously, and. I was, that video is like for me just to say goodbye to him even though we were like already separated we have been separated for <laughs> four months yeah <laughs> yeah he felt really bad he wanted me to like contact to contact him on his phone number I mean he gave me his phone number contact him or text him or call him or whatever. Um, obviously, I was hesitant. I didn't want to do that, of course. Then, uh, yeah, I changed my mind. Maybe I should go for it. I mean, he came back to me on my, like, on my birthday, you know. Um, in October, he came back. That, that is when I was feeling at peace, like, after the whole hell roller coaster, uh, roller coaster, I was feeling better. I was feeling closer to being at peace. And when that happens, th then he comes back, right? There's this energetic shift. When I'm feeling better, then he started feeling the pull from me. Then he comes back to me. So it happened. So we rekindled and we started contacting each other, you know. I was the one who put the effort. I was like the most reaching out to him. And 
Yeah, and then back to that old cycle again with the push and pull and separation. It, it gets being colder again. Um, yeah, just the same thing over again. And like, even after confessing my feelings to him, he thought I was like obsessed over him. Oh, I'm just obsessed. Like, it was kind of disrespectful, obviously, because he's the one who like seemed like he's into me and then got me hooked onto him. And then when that happened, it was just like it twisted. It turned into something that he's trying to like weaponize me. Like it felt like I was taking an advantage. Um, my love is being weaponized. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that was quite just disrespectful. Um, I experienced some um, body regulations. Uh, I was on constant survival mode, fight or flight. Um. A few times uh, I get frustrated at him. Um, you know, just apparently it's called reactive abuse is the term that uh, that I just found out. Reactive abuse and get frustrated at him a few times. Yeah. Um, can I can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sure. Um, do you think that the information about Cunilini is wrong? Did someone give you the wrong information about a Cunilini awakening? Or do you think the whole entire process surrounding the Cunilini was, is wrong about how people describe it? So the Kundalini, when you look at the symptoms, they are actually quite true, quite accurate, but it is portrayed in a false light that this uh, spiritual ascension that it helps you to to awaken to your true path when it's actually completely the opposite is a form of spiritual attack to drain you and to the point where your reality collapses and you have no control over your life your reality in general, like you start having bad luck all of a sudden, no abundance in, in life. Just it was just bad. Like this whole thing is completely dark. And Duane is really dark. It's a form of spiritual attack and you're energetically being attacked. It is is a form of entity attachment, Kundalini. I mean, if you look at the whole story of uh, Adam and Eve, there is this Kundalini, which is a, a serpent like Lilith in, in heaven that tried to manipulate Eve. You can say Eve was manipulated by the Kundalini serpent and they descended from heaven and they became like the fall and you can see like the connection obviously kundalini is is bad it's really dark at least according to my experience i had kundalini because of my twin flame right obviously was targeted and hijacked by this entity to get him to like to meet me and then it transfer, uh, transferred from him to to me. Then I got spiritually attacked. That's why I had the Kundalini. In E. Florgan's book, he talks about it. Um, energetic drain, drainage. There's this uh, entity attachment, vampiristic entity. is an energy that, that is hijacked into our energetic field for the purpose of feeding those entities, you know, they're feeding off of our energy and um, lower energy, actually. They feed off of lower energy. When we're in a bad state, then they feed off of us. So, yeah, 
it's really bad. What led you to wanting to find your flim, twin flame? Do you think, do you, did you just want a relationship or did you want to see whether or not it was true that twin flames were real? Well, um, because um, I left my five year relationship with my ex, so I mean, see me, I'm gonna find some someone else. I mean, some guy's gonna appear in my life, and maybe I unconsciously <laughs> manifested him, <laughs> and then he just showed up like it was so unex unexpected, it was just a weird coincidence, really. You can see I was expecting that. <laughs> do you do you think that he was your twin flame, or do you think that he was a fake twin flame that was sent to you? Well, at that time, I thought he was my soulmate. Like that, that is my first assumption because um i've had so many experiences in the past you know there's this mirroring effect there's telepathy going on mind telepathy and uh one of them like i would have a, a premonition dream you know it's like a coincidence at least one premonition that happened to me so that's why I felt like that with him because I've had this experience, you know. Then apparently it, it turned out to be something else, way worse than I thought, way more intense. Because soulmates in general, they're really peaceful and harmonious, but with him, it wasn't like that at all. It was really intense. Did you ever see these entities that were attacking you? Did you ever see the entity that was attached to your twin flame? Did you ever see what they look like or um hmm, yeah, that's a good question, but I'm not really psychic. Uh, surprisingly, I'm spared from that. Um, but I think I did see some of them in my dreams. Some of them were like invisible, and one appeared to me like um, a man that transformed into a vampire, then back into an invisible entity trying to cloak himself so that uh, to prevent me from seeing them, I guess you can say i I barely can get to see them like I don't see entities unfortunately, but you can say I sense their energy um it was really strong um, i had like an incubus energy uh, in my dreams sleep paralysis I, I was seduced in my dream it is one of the common dreams that twin flames have faced they would have this incubus succubus dreams where they would be seduced and sexually yeah I was seduced but not raped or anything just seduced as if this entity is trying to con control me you know whisper into my <laughs> ear and seduce me like by touching me oh, it was just weird and yeah I never get to see their full form really why but do you twin flame Um, why do you think that you were targeted by this entity be during this twin flame re twin flame relationship? Why do you think do you think that you were targeted because of your because you were close to your spiritual awakening or were you close to like um spiritually bonding with your mate or or did they try to prevent a peaceful and spiritual and harmonious twin flame reunion or twin flame connection with your in that relationship i think i was targeted because uh, because uh spiritually like i had kundalini i mean 
I was already targeted before meeting my twin flame. I mean, I just encountered, I mean, I bumped into those people in in some like uh, LOA community group. They were, happened to be twin flamers and they also had entities. One is hijacked by different forms of entities like ETs, similar to alien love flight and the other one is like the dark side of Jupiter. It seems like we are all in the same page. It's just that I didn't, it wasn't my time yet to meet my twin flames. So it just started from there, like from meeting those people, joining their group. And then after that, I met, I met my twin flame. It was just a weird coincidence. I think maybe in my past, I have a history of meeting soulmates. Maybe it's already orche orchestrated like way before, probably from previous life lifetimes. And yeah, um, I mean, it just happened. It's like, it's a matter of, of time, really. Do you... um? Do you think that your group that you were part of or associated, did, do you think that they had any hand in it because they were jealous? Or do you think that they, or did they not have any association or affiliation with this twin flame relationship that you had? No, I wouldn't say they're jealous, but yes, one of them did admit that they wanted to find my twin flame uh, then I went through a breakout with my ex at that time. Then I moved on from him. I got confused between my supposed twin flame and then my ex. I thought my ex was my twin flame, but apparently it's not. It's karmic soulmate, you know, all these labor, labels. Yeah, then I think this one is my twin flame. Yeah, so long. They weren't jealous of me. Of course not. They wanted they wanted to help me out and find my twin flame, and it just happened. Uh, whatever. It's not like I was asking, "Oh my God, I want to meet my twin flame. I want to find my partner." No, it wasn't. It wasn't like that at all. But let's say I was like expecting to meet someone in my life. I mean, whatever happens, it just happens. I mean, that's. That's what I thought. Has this relationship jeopardized your future relationships with other people? Um, it didn't really affect me, especially not really. Until one day when I was going through that deep depression thing, where it led me towards this stage of ego death, where I, I was feeling like death, I didn't want to live. I was having suicidal feelings. Like at this point is where it led me to isolate myself from people. I was stuck in, in the house, you know, my apartment. I just didn't want to do anything. I was, demotivated um for like maybe a week then after that i got out of this and i started socializing back again but that is when hap when that ego's death stage happened this is where i started isolating myself but like that was it it was just for like maybe a week or so yeah And I was when, crying a lot. Do you think that this relationship was sabotaged, or do you think that it was mostly his doing? Like it was his fault on the relationship, or do you think that there was more to play here than what meets the eye? Definitely both. There is some interference for sure, but then on his part, he's narcissistically abusing me it was quite abusive 
yeah. went through that cycle of narcissistic abuse where he was love bombing me like the first stage. It happened really quickly. I mean, it was just once. I mean, then the next day he has gone cold and distant. Then rekindling back again, then back with the push and pull, uh, again with the separation. Uh, I remember I was ghosted in the middle of our conversation. I was like ghosted. Yeah, I was ghosted plenty of times, of course. And being discarded, then the devaluation happened, you know? Yeah, it's telling me I'm obsessed and he would call me names, he was verbally abusive. He sent me like abusive voice notes. He sounded like really angry. I mean, he's he's a, an aggressive person in general, besides that charismatic, you know, has this charisma. The other side of him is really aggressive. He gets irritated think easily. Do you think that you were led to him on purpose to experience this negative side of Twin Flame? Or do you think that it was orchestrated for you to basically meet this person and experience just a Twin Flame relationship? Or do you think there was alternative motive with this meeting with your Twin Flame? It was definitely in both ways. It was orchestrated. It was orchestrated to meet him. He was orchestrated <laughs> to meet me. It was targeted by some forces, unseen forces, to come and meet me. It doesn't matter if it's real life on, or, or online. It's, it's just the same thing, really. Um, yeah, it's definitely orchestrated. But I didn't expect him to be, to be someone that I recognized. I I thought it's gonna be some strange person that I don't know, but for some odd reason, he decided to <laughs> to pick this guy that I recognized from years ago because of the videos I watched and and just sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, it's really strange. And, um what type of it's advice definitely... what type of advice yeah, so... would you give um people about the twin flame relationship or the canoe lady awakening like what pieces of information do you believe is false or not correct or something to stay away from in that type of knowledge about twin flame and canoe lady Well, about the Kundalini, I will say that um, if you had most of these dark experiences, if you had like darker Kundalini symptoms, there are both sides, of course. There's the, the light Kundalini, then the other one is the dark Kundalini. If you're having dark Kundalini side, all of those bad symptoms, like what I had, uh, energy dr drainage and emotional highs, cr crashing lows, hypersensitivity, um, um, psychic, yeah, psychic abilities. If you experience sort of spiritual attack, uh, um, etheric abuse, you you started to have nightmares, sleep paralysis, all of the sudden, then the chances are that it's this whole thing is really bad. Obviously, in general, Kundalini is, is orchestrated by entities to target at people spiritually to prevent them from progressing in real life, really. It's really bad. I, I recommend people to not try to practice to activate the Kundalini through depression it will really destroy your life really and in a twin flame relationship it is also not good 
it is a form of spiritual energetic attack to the point where you're feeling drained constantly you'll be put on fight or flight mode this all the time is just extremely painful and really draining i don't recommend it i i want people to know that this is not a true twin flame experience because you, i don't think you will have this at all is this energy is a really bad energy for a, a true twin flame i don't think you will have you will have it you should feel energized not drained you will feel love bliss you wouldn't have a lot of doubts or confusion you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. a lot of twin flame teachings being put out there are mostly false especially when they mention about the push and pull separation the kundalini is just completely toxic and false yeah do you think that they were trying to brainwash you with this relationship in your dream state? Or do you think that they were psychically attacking you in your sleep with through your dreams? I was definitely psychic, psychically attacked for sure. There is a form of manipulation and mind control. The fact that I was like, being seduced in my dreams and I felt really heavy and it was really suffocating it was just to keep me in this like to be in a submissive mode in a way to keep me in control and stuck um, like I remember this dream like it was a nightmare I had the dream about my twin flame he was trying to like commit suicide in my dream for some odd reason like jumping off the building he was trying to do that and it was to keep me my mind controlled the way I interpreted it in my dream I thought he was he was going through something maybe oh maybe he's having kundalini or oh shit maybe he's going through a dark night of soul the same way I did I thought he was going through something but no it was me it was an indication of like depression I was going through the depression that's why I had this dream not only that I was being controlled um, when I caught him in my dream like I, of him about to commit suicide like I ran after him I stopped him and I was like cuddling him basically like just to prevent him from like jumping off I was like cuddling him from behind and then he like turned his back like facing me he was he had this sorrow deep sorrow in his eyes and It's so weird. It's like I'm being <laughs> seduced again just by looking at his face. I was seduced. I was in trance. Just, I fell in love again. It's a form of manipulation. It's like I was MK Ultra, really. It's like MK Ultra. Um, yeah. Just to gain sympathy for him and and to fall for him and to be to be trapped in this connection and not leave where I was supposed to like to not spot the red flags to ignore them because oh he is my twin flame right I should stay and I should like heal him or do some work for us to reunite again obviously but, yeah at the end it was just completely false it was draining it's not worth it yeah I reframed from that at the end yeah. so 
And so to order to wrap up this um, episode for today, is there any type of advice or message that you want to tell the audience before you wrap up the show? Hmm, I suggest you guys to not follow the teachings, especially when it talks about the separation, pushing for uh, Kundalini is really portrayed in a false light, it's completely false. It's, it's a form of spiritual warfare connection. Uh, people are being targeted for this. It's like a love is at war, love is being used against us. Um, also, to spot the red flags early on from this type of connection because we don't know actually what what if you're being abused. What if this person has didn't have a good intention in the first place? What if they were manipulating it, manipulating you or taking advantage of you? the first place, even the first meeting, it could happen actually. So follow follow your intuition, spot the red flags early on. Don't ignore them. Don't stay in this uh, relationship or you can say don't get in a relationship with them if if there are red flags because the more you stay, the more you're getting abused uh, um, be more knowledgeable um, be familiar with narcissistic abuse cycle cycles um, also study a little bit of spirituality if you're experiencing some spiritual stuff just to um, to understand what you're going through if if you're having these both experiences, like what I did, eventually it will lead you towards Eve Lorgan. Uh, so many materials are out there. You will end up finding to flame deception. Uh, there are other channels as well. I'm underground star. This whole thing is spiritual warfare to target two people. Um, to be put in this emotional highs, emotional trauma, so that these entities can feed off of the drama happening, this connection. Let's say if you near a twin flame uh, online, you all, eventually you'll be orchestrated to meet up in real life as well. It almost happened to me, I mean, my twin flame was closer to me twice, and, but the the actual physical meeting didn't happen. I'm really glad. glad. Um, if you meet twin flame physically, please like don't. It will make you feel ten times worse than before. The reason why I didn't have extreme experiences like others because. It's probably because I didn't meet my twin flame physically, so I'm like, yeah, I'm spared from that. Just please don't follow the teachings. Um, avoid new age stuff, those practices, um, because they are used as a portal uh, to feed those entities, actually, um, like meditations, yoga. You really open up like a portal. You're being, you're opening up, opening up yourself to these entities. You're inviting them, and they're hijacking you and manipulating you. So just avoid that. Yeah, that's all. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for showing up and telling your story. I really appreciate it. Um. Thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us this important information that I think a lot of people need to 
learn and hear about. So thank you so much for showing up today and telling your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. I hope I you have a you for Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.